Hi everyone, Brian here. Welcome back to my channel and I'm popping on today to announce a new video series here at BCC TV, but not the new video series that you might have expected because over the last few videos I've been hinting at a new series that I'm working on and I'm still working on that series. That is still coming and coming soon, I hope. Um, but what's happened is another idea has, has slipped into my mind and I thought that would be a good idea for a little series on my channel. Not really a series actually, it's going to be more of a type of video that I'm going to start doing or try to do a bit more often. Um, the first characteristic of this video is that it's going to, or this type of video is that it's going to be short. So I know that most of my videos are about half an hour long, maybe a bit longer depending on what I'm talking about. Um, but I also know that lots of you out there have very busy lives and you want short, sharp, quick, useful information. Um, and I hope to be able to provide some of that for you. Now my last video um, was actually a short video. It was accidentally short. It was just um, a tarot spread video that I ran through and I got so much great feedback from that, including lots of people saying this was great because it was short and um, it gave us or gave me a chance to uh, to delve into it and really get to grips with it without having to watch for half an hour or an hour or two hours or whatever it is you know some videos go on that long um, and I know that some of my videos do as well so um, yes so this is a, a tarot tip video and it's actually a topic that I've wanted to discuss with you for a while it's something that's been in my mind for a while um, and that is the concept of the tarot cards as coaches, life coaches. Actually, it's about the tarot card as questions, the empowering questions that coaches might ask. Now, uh, this was something that was covered actually by Kelly Fitzgerald from The Truth In Story in her Tarothon video, which was, was great. Um, and I highly recommend that you have a look at that. Um, and I really enjoyed her video. And I also kind of thought, oh, she beat me to it because I've had this in my mind for a while. And it's how I use the tarot actually for myself and with my coaching clients when I've got coaching clients. I haven't actually at the moment because I've got so many other things that I'm doing. But when I do work with coaching clients, then um, I use the card if they are up for using tarot then I use the cards very much in this way. Um, and the way in question is simply this. Instead of seeing the cards as answers to the questions that you might be asking, or at least as well as seeing them as answers to the questions you might be asking, see them as additional questions, empowering questions that help you get to the real root of your issue and help you explore the issue. Let me explain what I mean. So as coaches, those of us who work as coaches, we know that we like to um, ask, and we should be asking as coaches, empowering questions. A coach shouldn't be telling somebody what to do, shouldn't be giving advice to somebody in terms of this is how you should do that, or you should try that, or that, that wasn't a good idea, you shouldn't have done that. That's not what coaching is about. Coaching is about helping the client, helping the person being coached to explore and discover their own answers. In that regard, of course, it is very much like a good tarot reading. A good tarot reading, in my opinion, doesn't say to the client, do this, do that. It gets the client to consider their position in a bit more detail. So when you bring the two together, powerful, very powerful. So uh, let me just run through with you what uh, empowering questions are and then give you an example of how you might apply empowering questions to a reading when a particular card comes up. And I've taken some of this information about empowering questions from a book called Coaching for Transformation, a very good book, very interesting. I'll pop a link to that below so that you can see where um, some of this has come from. Now, those of you who have um, worked with empowering questions will know that empowering questions generally begin with what or how. They're usually very simple and straightforward questions. They invite answers that are more than just yes or no answers. Yes or no answers close the conversation down and help us to not consider additional options. So you don't want to be asking yes or no questions. Um, you also don't really want to be asking why questions. A why question, like why did you do that, can sound quite invasive and it can make a client or make yourself feel very defensive. So it's better to ask what or how questions. You can occasionally ask when questions, um, as long as that when question isn't um, about you as a coach trying to satisfy your own need for more information from the client. You want it to be a, a question that opens up options for the client. So other criteria for empowering questions, they should lead to clarification, they should call the client 
to introspection so that it leads a person inside to consider their own answers. It should help people or yourself to consider a new perspective. It should bring light to conflict and to inner conflict so it should open up options rather than close them down. It should help a client or yourself face fear and learn from fear and understand what message fear might have. It should help um, an empowering question should help us consider something new, a new way of looking at things. Um, it should help us uh, generate feedback, either from ourselves or from, from the client. Um, and it should generate movement. An empowering question should always, always lead us to understanding how we might move forward, which is why you might think, well, if the cards just come up with a question for me, am I, that, am I not going to just be where I was before I started the reading? No because the cards will be coming at you with an empowering question and empowering questions always, always should, if they're empowering, move you forward. So here are some examples of empowering questions. Empowering questions might probe. They might ask, what do you want in this situation? What's your intention in this situation? What are you excited about by this situation? They might help you clarify your values. So what do you care about in this situation? Um, if you get this thing that you care about, then what do you want? What would be next for you? How does this plan that you're considering honour your values? Uh, examples of empowering questions that help you set goals. If you knew that you'd succeed at this endeavour, what else would you do? How can you make your aspirations bigger and larger and more productive? What's the big picture here? Other empowering questions expand your options. What is possible here? What impact would you like to have? What would the most resourceful person you know do in this situation? What would be possible in this situation if you didn't censor yourself? Empowering questions can help you get support. What do you need help with? What can you delegate in this situation? What request can you make to help you in this situation? They can help you uh, move into action. How do you plan to achieve this thing that you plan to do? How can you break this goal down into smaller steps? Is there anything else you need to do in order to be prepared? On a scale of one to 10, how committed are you to this plan? And if the scale, if the answer to that is quite low on the scale, a supplementary question would be, how can we move that grading up closer to 10? What would you need to do in order to feel that it was closer to 10, your, your commitment level? Breaking through barriers, it can help you break through, through barriers. What's stopping you? What would motivate you to change? What would it cost you if things were to remain the same as they are? Empowering questions can help us reduce our sense of overwhelm. So what can you stop doing so that you can make room for what's important? What are you doing now that's working? How might you do more of this? If you only were to focus on one thing in this situation, what would that one thing be? And empowering questions can also help you elicit wisdom from yourself, inside yourself, which is where all the wisdom in the world lies. What might you do differently next time? What does your heart tell you about this situation? When you're at your best, what's different about the way you would approach this? What do you know in your gut? What do you really want in this situation? Now, those are examples of some general empowering questions, but empowering questions can also help us connect with different dimensions of our being. And they can help us connect with the soul, the spirit, uh, the physical body, um, our emotions, our mental capacity, to, and so on. And of course, if you're familiar with tarot, you'll know that the suits in the tarot deck um, and the majors relate to the different elements. So if you want to connect with soul and spirit, what you might consider is the following types of questions when a major card appears. Where are you most alive? What is the deepest or wildest possibility here? What is it to be with yourself? What is it like to be with yourself when you're just being and not doing? Where does your passion live inside you? What excites you at a soul level? Where does the universe want you to stretch next? How can you create a loving culture around you? Those are some examples of big picture, spirit, soul type questions. 
uh, if you get a pentacle in your reading, then what you might do is consider some questions that help you connect with the physical body and the physical world. Things like, what brings out your laughter? Where and when do your worries disappear? That's to do with lightness, that kind of feeling of lightness. That, that question, of course, could also uh, connect with the mind, but it also is to do with that kind of felt sense of lightness. What moves you forward physically, as well as theoretically and, and metaphorically? In what ways does your body flow? Where are you sensual? What is it to love and appreciate every part of your body? How might you show gratitude to your body? Those are some examples of pentacles questions. Examples of swords questions are examples of questions that fit with your mind and elicit more information about your mental capacities. So how do you tap the full capacity of your mind? What is possible here? That's about generating ideas. And then a question you might ask when you or a client has come up with a list of ideas to really stretch yourself is what other ideas might be helpful here? What values are at stake for you? And where do you choose to put your attention? And then connecting with emotions, that's obviously cups, if cups come up. Um, how can you embrace your emotions more constructively? What are you celebrating? What makes you happy? What is your fear calling you to do? And also, what is your fear calling you not to do? Um, what opportunities have you missed? And a supplementary question to that, of course, could be how might you move towards those opportunities now? Um, if you are dealing with grief and sadness, a question might be what support do you need to help you with this grief and sadness? Another question might be what is the gift within this grief and sadness? Uh, and then in anger, what about your anger? If you're feeling the emotion of anger, what about your anger calls you forth into action? So those are some examples of cups questions. So let's look at a specific card. And I have picked as my example, a very favorite card of mine. And that is my dear, dear Empress card. Um, if you want to know about my Empress experience, the Empress card basically is how I got into tarot in a very specific way. It was through a dream. I'll put the link to that video below because um, it's too long to go into here. But anyway, I picked the Empress. now. Imagine you have done a reading, doesn't matter what the question was, particularly for the purposes of this example. Um, although, of course, you would look at the context of the question when you consider what the Empress is asking you next. But you've done a reading, you've done a spread, you've dealt your cards out and up pops the Empress. So what empowering questions might the Empress be asking you? I think, and I've made lists of questions for, for all the cards in the deck, gleaned from my own um, study of the tarot, glean from various books that I've read, glean from my experience of readings, and I'd encourage you to do the same if you are up for using this technique more often. So here are some of the questions that I've got listed for the Empress. How can your potential for growth best be nurtured? Where might you better mother yourself? What creative opportunities are calling you forth now? Who might nurture, protect and, and, and inspire you at this time? What seeds can you plant now? And which seeds might be ripe for harvesting? How might you best balance your energies with the energies of other people? Who or what would benefit from your nurturing and caring? And then finally, as an example, if your love were a shield, what might it protect? Those are the questions that the Empress might ask. So my final tip in this video, if you are up for using this technique, is get your cards out, sit with them, journal with them, and consider the empowering questions that each card might have for you. And that way, you can work with your cards as your coaches. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you again very soon.